Hi everyone, so this is the first lesson for the A1 Forces pack. Now, all this stuff here will be covered in lesson one, and then this will be lesson two. So it's quite a lot of theory with this. Um, so it'll be quite a few videos, so I'm sorry about that. Right, so let's have a look at the first page then. So it says, mechanics deals with the actions of forces and objects. Uh, what we do is we make them easier. We have modeling assumptions that make them easier. So we might get rid of air resistance. We might ignore friction on some questions. Um, so we need to be able to suss out what our assumptions are to make it easier. So it says here from kinematics that we've got the idea of a particle. So we kind of treat everything as single particles. Now there's a list of, here we go, some assumptions. So if it's light, if it's inextensible, if it's rigid, if it's a rod, if it's smooth, if it's a laminar, if it's uniform. So I'll have a read through them at your leisure. Right then, so we've got to draw some diagrams for these. So it says do a force diagram, so that's what we're going to do. So it says the force on an object down in, acting downwards is its weight. So weight is its mass, what we measure on a set of scales, times by gravity. So you've done that at school. So a person standing still, so we treat this person as an object, and they have a weight, mg. Now the floor pushes back with an equal and opposite force, and that's a normal resistance. If it didn't, the person would either sink through the floor, if mg was bigger than r, or... I don't know what it would do, actually. If it was the other way around, you can't really bounce them off into the outer space. So, so that's that there. And that's in equilibrium. Right, so then it says, a pool ball gliding across a, a table. So here's my pool ball. It's got a weight acting down. It's got a normal re reaction there. It has a, an acceleration in the direction of travel. Now, if it's not smooth, there will be a frictional force acting against its direction of movement. Let's have a look at uh, a ball rolling down the hill. So here's the hill, an angle theta. There's my ball, acts down, mg. So it's got an acceleration going that way. Because this, it's, it doesn't say it's smooth, I'm going to have friction acting against it. Now, something that's quite nice is if we think about this weight component, because we always split it as parallels and perpendiculars to the direction of motion. So it's actually got two components. And we don't, you don't really need to know this now, but it's nice to see. So the one next to the angle will be an mg cos theta, and the one opposite the angle will be an mg sine theta. And that's breaking up the, 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 um, the weight component into parallels and perpendiculars. Right, so, so a, we open a parachute. So this person's falling with mg, and uh, so it's going down. And then we open the parachute, so there's going to be a resistive force there going against them. To slow them down. Then we've got a speeding motorbike. So our speeding motorbike, same idea as our person as a block. So it's got a weight, it's got a normal reaction. Now that speeding motorbike will have some form of driving force, which we might use P. And then also it's got some friction. And it's traveling in that direction. There we go. A car pulling a trailer now, so this is the last one for this page. So a car pulling a trailer, so we'll assume it's going left to right. So here's my car, it's awesome. So now that's got a weight and a normal reaction. If we assume it's driving, it's going to have some form of driving force. And then I've got the coupling that attaches to the trailer. So the trailer has its own mass, so it might be that a car, one of them, M1G and the other one M2G, but you've got to be aware that they have different masses. So I can might be able to sneak a little one in there and then a two in there, which means that's a reaction.